Mike Marler gets out the broom. Chase Dietz wasn't even going to race. The ASCS gets an upgrade, and a California racetrack is rising from the dead. Let's go. It's Monday, April 8th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. Did you know that right now CJ Leary has the most top 10s in a row with the USAC Sprint Cars? Or how about that Donnie Schatz has moved forward the most in World of Outlaws features so far this season? Or that Jonathan Davenport leads the Lucas Regulars in heat race average finish in 2024? All of these stats and more can be found easily with a subscription to Dirt Tracker Plus. Like, I'm sure you do, I watch a ton of racing action each week, but that's not enough to understand everything that's happening around the sport, which is why I built Dirt Tracker's analytics section. It's got race results and stat breakdowns for all of the top national series and special events, and at this moment is approaching 1,900 races worth of data. And if you want to access uh, every tool and number I use for these shows, grab a subscription to Dirt Tracker Plus, $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. The year subscription gets you two months free effectively. And you can cancel easily anytime. You don't have to send an email. You don't have to make a phone call. You just go into your profile. You can hit the cancel button super easy. Signing up gets you access to the Plus dashboard, which has added stat tools and visualizations. You'll unlock more than 25 extra features, including exclusive insights not found anywhere else. Whether you're a race fan, a member of the media, if you work for a series or a racetrack, Dirt Tracker Plus is the perfect resource for current dirt racing data to elevate your knowledge or your work. Both World of Outlaws series, all three USAC national divisions, the Chili Bowl, High Limit, Lucas, and a whole lot more. See everything Plus has to offer and sign up for a subscription over at dirttracker.com slash get plus. At Volunteer Speedway on Sunday, Mike Marler made it a clean sweep of the XR Super Series opening weekend. He bagged $12,000 to go along with the thirty dollars he won uh, on Saturday night. And just like the night before, he had to hold off a late charge from Devin Moran to get it done. Marler now up to four wins on the season, including a dirt car score at Volusia, that Lucas win at Golden Isles, and now his first two career XR victories. In his past six dirt late model appearances, Marler has three wins, two seconds, and a third. Guy hasn't been finishing off the podium. And I'd say this team has their package dialed in at the moment. Remember that Marler is chasing the Lucas Championship this season, and at the moment, just one spot out of that all-important Final Four. If that Skyline team keeps this speed up, they could be a, a tough out all season. The next time we'll see the XR Super Series is May 16th through the 18th at Ogilvy Raceway in Minnesota. Later this week, you'll have plenty of other dirt lane model action to get into that includes the World of Outlaws at Farmer City for the I 100. They've been off here for a while. The MLRA opens their season at Lucas Oil Speedway. They got 20000 to win for the Spring Nationals. And then Hunt the Front is at Alltech for two nights. The, that one culminates in a 15000 to win show. In some Sunday sprint car action, Chase Dietz wasn't even originally scheduled to race at Lincoln Speedway. That was according to Jeremy Elliott, but he loaded up his own car and went racing, and it was a good thing he did. A flag-to-flag -flag victory earned him $5,000 for the day. He topped Matt Campbell and Danny Dietrich in the 30 lapper. Dietz is also running the Zemco machine at Port Royal this season. He finished sixth there on Sunday in his debut. He did say that he would be filling in other races in his own car, and I guess was, this was an opportunity to do that. He seems to have found something at Lincoln as well. Uh, he had won twice there last season. I haven't seen updated standings as of today, but I believe Danny Dietrich maintains that Lincoln uh, points lead for that track championship. One other sprint car note for you today, World Racing Group's investment in the ASCS continues to get better as they announced in recent days the addition of a traveling fire and rescue team for the national tour. This new safety team will be led by Billy Hurt, who is a career firefighter and EMT, who's also been around the ASCS Warrior region for several years. WRG has been ramping up their fire and safety efforts in recent years, and uh, that also included the addition of a dedicated safety team and safety truck for the World of Outlaws sprint cars this year. Tyler Bachman, who is also the Extreme Outlaw Midget Series Director, has been leading a lot of those efforts across the organization, and he himself is a trained firefighter. I really like that we are seeing more track and safety folks in fire suits and helmets at tracks around the country, and more investments made in this particular area. Dirt racing needs to continue pushing for more and better safety measures for tracks, for the cars and drivers, and first responders. And I, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this video floating around the last, what, 24 hours or so of a track in New Zealand where a street stock ended up over the fencing. Those are the types of things we cannot have happening in this sport. Uh, after losing the first two weekends of the season, the ASCS National Tour kicks off April 19th and 20th at the Super B Speedway in Louisiana.
On my ongoing quest to spotlight good news for dirt tracks, I've got a story for you today about a track in California planning on rising again from the dead. It seems like all we hear about anymore is tracks closing and bad news and all of this stuff. So where possible, I want to highlight some places with good things happening. Last week, it was Arrowhead Speedway where the Outlaws raced on Saturday night. And today, it's Santa Maria Speedway. Back in 2021, the third mile Santa, Mir uh, Santa Maria Raceway shut down during the summer amidst a battle with the very nearby neighborhood over noise complaints. The previous operators had purchased the facility with hopes of building out a complete entertainment facility that would host racing and concerts and all sorts of different types of events. But the battle with the neighborhood and eventually what turned into a battle with San Luis Obispo County created a legal situation that the Speedway couldn't afford to fight coming out of the pandemic. So instead of continuing that fight, they decided to then shutter the racetrack. Uh, since that happened, they did run three races in 2022, including for the USAC CRA. There was a Western States midget race there and a lightning sprint race. There was also a deal to purchase the facility uh, and turn it into a storage company that fell through. And then efforts to revive the racetrack again started later in 2023. A local karting club had been using the infield of the racetrack for some events, and now a plan is in place to have a 2024 schedule of big shows. The first race is scheduled for April 27th and includes IMCA categories. The rest of the season includes stops for the USAC CRA sprint cars. They've got a NARC 410 show and races for the new Ultimate Sprint Car Series that's popped up out there. According to a story in the Santa Maria Times, longtime general manager David Castaneda will operate the track in 2024, while Tony Pombo, who is known in the racing circles out in California, is in the process of buying the facility. They hope to have a full uh, schedule in 2025. Back on Friday, a new Facebook page popped up for the Speedway that is being renamed from Santa Maria Raceway to Santa Maria Speedway. Don't want you to get confused there that I was calling it both. Uh, and they posted several photos of the progress. There's a significant amount of water on the track. Uh, that is from recent storms. And there's also a nearby creek that I think flooded a little bit. Uh, they're trying to get all of that pumped out. There uh, is work as well ongoing to uh, kind of clean up the track surface. They're trying to reclaim some clay as well. If you aren't aware, Santa Maria sits right on Highway 101, just north of the town of Santa Maria. It's about two hours west of Bakersfield. If you want to keep up with the progress, find Santa Maria Speedway on Facebook. You can also read more in that Santa Maria Times article and in a recent story over at SprintCarUnlimited.com. Now that's it for The Daily Show today. Dirt racing news all the time over at dirttracker.com. Streaming schedule at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Social media things happening all the time across platforms. Just search for at Dirt Tracker. Hope you guys have a great Monday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.